Hey everyone, welcome back to The Stationary Rider. I am here today with a very exciting unboxing. I just got back from Yoseka Stationery, my home pen, um, which if you follow Yoseka at all, you might remember um, the drama, I guess, <laughs> or big thing that happened with their third and final pen. So I have the first two here, um, which was basically that Sailor made a few mistakes in the design. Um, so um, in the end, they gave people two options. They could keep the, the pen that had some mistakes for yeah, a little bit of a discount, or you could send it back to be repaired to the original design. Um, so I chose to send it back and get it repaired to the original design because I really liked the original design and, you know, I really wanted to have the, you know, pen that Yoseka designed because I'm obviously a collector. <laughs> so these are their first two pens. The first one was the Origin pen and the second one was the Refresh pen. Um, so I really wanted to have the pen that they designed to be the final pen in their collection. Um, so I just got it back from being repaired. It happened a lot faster than I thought it would. Um, so I figured we'd unbox it and I will, um, I have a lot of videos that I took of the first pen before I sent it back. So I will try and put those up on the video as you know, maybe alongside some of the footage. So hopefully you'll be able to see a little bit of the difference. Um, and then I've got a new fall ink that I'm going to ink it up with. And also, um, in the process of exchanging for the correct design, I changed to a Sailor Zoom nib, which is um, kind of a special nib that they have. I've never tried before, um, so we'll do a little line test and see what that looks like. So let's get right into it. Um, I got a really lovely note from Daisy uh, with my repaired pen, and um, I just am probably going to stick that one in my, in my notebook because it was really sweet. So. Um, and that's just one of the things that I love about shopping with Yoseka is they're just so thoughtful and they put so much into everything they do. Every small package, every large package, doesn't matter, you're going to get a note, you're going to get a postcard, and you're going to feel special for shopping there. So they really are just wonderful. Um, so, da da da, here we are. Um, so we should have a converter underneath here. Yep. And some cartridges, but I don't typically use those. So. so here we are. And so the main difference between this, which is their original design, and what Sailor made originally by accident was two things. Um, the trim on the pen, so like your clip and the, the trim here and like these two spots is that um, the trim was supposed to be their yellow gold, um, and Sailor actually has three different trim colors. So they have the yellow gold, which is also on their Origins pen, and they have a, a rhodium, which is like a silver trim. And then we all learned through this that Sailor actually makes a lighter gold trim, which we have all started to call champagne gold. And I'm pretty sure this is an example of that. Um, yeah, I believe it is. Let me double check. I know this one has the... Might show it a little bit better. So it is subtle, but it is a paler gold trim um, compared to the full yellow gold. So that should give you an idea of the difference. Um, maybe I'll this one here. Um, so yeah, um, so the original design is this. It had the yellow gold trim. Um, and then the other difference was that the nib was supposed to be a bicolor nib. So, see that? This one does have it. Get it to focus. So you can see the silver and the yellow gold on the trim. And I think that's a big reason for the like offer discount is that the bicolor nib does cost a little bit more. Um, so let's just take a look here. So the other pens, like this is just a solid gold nib. 
And so the, the, the design they sent out first just had the pale gold nib, solid nib. So um, I do really prefer the way that the yellow gold looks with the kind of, you know, creamy latte colors, I think. It just kind of reminds me of the caramel latte. Um, and I do think, especially looking at it now, I felt this way when I looked at the videos, but I think that the kind of olive colored finials really pop a lot more. So I guess the finial and the butt, I don't know what you call this part. The pin butt, they both have this kind of very light olive color. And I really think that that pops out a lot more with the yellow gold. Um, and again, with the clear cap, which is so beautiful, you really want to see that, the bicolor nib when you have the clear cap like that. Um, and again, I think looking at it now, the yellow gold with the, you know, gold dust clear cap, it really does just pop so much more. I mean, just looking at it, I, I'm very glad that I sent it back in because you know, I when they first showed the pen, I thought the design was beautiful. I was very excited for it. Um, and I wasn't disappointed with the pen. I, I think it still looks pretty the way that the accidental version is. Um, but I, I do think holding this now, I'm very glad I, you know, bit the bullet on patience and sent it back because it really does just look so beautiful, um, you know. I think this was primarily Ashley's design and, you know, I love Ashley and I really wanted to have the pen that she designed and, you know, it was worth it because her design is beautiful and it looks really good. So, um, that's enough I'll say about that because I'm not trying to make anyone who kept the other version feel bad because I, I think it's great that they gave an option. I know if I was Yoseka, I would feel probably a little sad that there are going to be two versions of the pen out in the world. And I think that sucks, but it just shows how great they are to their customers that they still offer, you know, those two different options for everyone to feel satisfied with the pen that they got. So, um, anyway, I will probably try in this spot, try and add the recordings I have of the pen, the original pen, or the, the first pen that got sent out. I don't even know what to call it anymore. Um, I'll try and put some video alongside so you can see some of the differences. So yeah, that's what the pen looks like. Very beautiful. So let's ink it up. Because I am very excited to see how the zoom nib writes. Um, from what I understand, the way that the zoom nib works is similar to the techo nib that I showed in my other video that CY does, which is basically that you get line variation depending on which angle you hold it at and that you can flip it over and get an extra fine line when you write upside down and i think that's brilliant i think that's really cool and um a lot of special edition sailors at least that come from sailor like you know um, sound of rain series and the minori i have those all only come usually in a medium fine um so I figured I probably would not have an opportunity to get a zoom nib anytime soon for a while because I'm kind of not planning to buy any more sailor pens, but that's always a knock on wood kind of thing. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to be inking it up with Dominant Industry Maple, and this is the swatch for it. So it's a nice, like red orange fall color which we're finally getting into fall here so i thought it'd be perfect and i thought it would go pretty well with the pen i also have the yoseka try me which is like a really good brown that i thought suited the pen as well so i might do that next time but i'm ready for fall it's my favorite season so let's go with that let me grab a notebook
Alright, so let's see. Yeah, there we go. So, we'll hold it at a very flat angle. Slightly higher angle. Slightly higher. So, I'm not seeing as much line variation as I saw with the Tetro Nib, which I'll pull it out and we can compare. Um, I would say just at a really normal writing angle, it probably writes even thicker than a broad. It was very thick. So I actually have a broad in my refresh. So let's just do a little comparison. So this is the broad. So yeah, that is a very thick line. And this is a standard medium fine. So I'm actually surprised at how thick that is. Um, so let's write upside down. So yeah, that is definitely like an extra fine line there when you write upside down. Uh, let's see. And even higher. Yeah, that is a very, very thin line. That might be more like a fine if you hold it at a little more of an angle. Uh, I realized I maybe started talking quieter, so let me correct that. Uh, so, I think that... That is very thick line. I mean, that is, whew, I am very surprised. That is a very bold line. <laughs> uh, not what I was expecting, but it's very cool. I don't think that that's, I think that's going to be too big for like any daily writing. Even if you write straight up and down. Um, so ultimately I feel like that's something I might have to have tuned. I was not expecting the line to be that thick. Um, right now I feel like, I guess if I wrote upside down with it, uh, that definitely feels strange to do. That's probably, that looks about like the broad line, if you hold it straight up and down. Um, it might be something I have to practice with, because I do feel like a lighter touch has an impact as well. So let me get the Esterbrook out, just to compare. So this is the Esterbrook with CY's Techo nib, um, and I did show this in my last in my fountain pen video. But this nib has a very similar concept, which is uh, the angle. Oh shoot, is it inked? Oh, it is. Okay, the the angle that you write at is going to affect the line thickness. So. Let's just compare a pretty wide. Yeah, I mean, I would say even at the thickest line on the Tetro nib, it's nowhere near as thick as the Zoom nib. Um, I'd say that's about the thickest line I could get with the Tetro nib. And I, I'd say you get a lot more line variation going down. Then you do with the zoom nib. So yeah, um, just something to be aware of, I suppose. Depends on what you want. I mean, I, I will say that you can really see the shading of the ink very well with the zoom nib. Uh, maybe that's the reason behind the name, is zoom in to the ink color. I don't know. Um, that Esther book is a very large pen. So yeah. Um, I guess that's about it for this video. Um, a little more shots of the pen here before we wrap up. And I hope you enjoyed uh, 
getting to see the pen up close. Hopefully I'll add that those clips into the other one so you can kind of see a good comparison of the difference um, between the original design and the champagne gold version. Um, I don't know, I don't really think there's going to be an option to get the champagne gold version, but if it makes you feel better about buying the original design, which I know they will be putting more up once they're, they get all their repaired stock back, um, I think it's a beautiful pen. I think the original design is better. <laughs> so um, if you didn't get the pen when it first came out and you're still thinking of it, I, I think it's I think it's a good pen. I think it's beautiful and I think you'd be really happy with it. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!